Hello everyone, welcome to the family. Um, my name is Com, I'm a growth hacker here. Um, so today we are going to, to talk about a very important uh, topic. Just before we get started, before I introduce uh, the speaker and uh, give you everything, a uh, quick information. Um, the Wi-Fi code is LAMIFA CC and the network is the family. So for those who come for the first time, who's coming here for the first time? Okay, welcome. Um, so for all of you, you can log in to the Wi-Fi. You have signs on the wall if you need uh, this information. And we use a hashtag that is TF Workshop. So you can tweet, you can disagree on Twitter, you can say uh, what you think. Um, and before we get started, I would like you to take just one minute uh, to introduce yourself to your neighbor. So just tell him or her why you're here. Uh, if you have a startup, you can pitch your startup. If you don't have one, just uh, tell him or her what, uh, what you can do, what are your skills, and then we get started. Okay, guys, for those who want to continue talking, you can do that after the workshop. You will have plenty of time. So we are going to get started. And um, there is a very important topic. So today is about, is about, uh, um, is about AdWords and um, Etienne will, will, will give you lots of insights. Um, I, I would like to make a little point clear. Um, we, we were having a big discussion after the last gross hacking meetup because we talked a, a lot about acquisition and acquisition costs. And keep in mind that gross hacking isn't only free and sometimes you have to spend money and sometimes you have to think in terms of what it costs you to acquire a user. So it's not always free, it's either time, it's either money. And um, today we, we are going to see how you can optimize this and how you can optimize your revenues uh, comparing to this acquisition. So Etienne will talk about that. Please welcome him, a huge round of applause, and uh, have a nice workshop. Uh, thank you very much, Com. So um, I'd, li I'd like to first uh, start by thanking the family for having us here. Um, we really like everything you guys do, uh, and all the content you guys put on, the, put on your YouTube channel. Um, I always enjoy, like, watching some of your videos before going to bed or just to learn a few more tips, you know. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, just uh, so I'm going to introduce myself. I am um, a search engine um, specialist. So what that means is basically I manage search and uh, social media accounts uh, for all of our clients, for some of our clients at Ifilab. So from um, setting the strategy uh, to creating the campaigns and optimizing the accounts, um, I've recently evolved to a more biz dev role, well, where my um, responsibilities are to, uh, um, to find new clients and grow the agency uh, and grow our uh, existing accounts. So just, just so I uh, get to know you a bit more, could you raise your hand if you already have a, an AdWords account here? Okay, so quite a, f uh, quite a few of you. Um, do you. Can you raise your hand if you invest more than 500 euros per month? Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just ask, asking you these questions to give me a, an idea of, of the audience here. Um, so, Efilab is a um, is an advertising agency. Um, you might know some of the companies we advise, um, such as Captain Train, um, La Redoute, Le Bon Coin, um, and some other uh, major French uh, advertisers. Um, we are cur currently expanding our our capabilities in uh, Dubai and in uh, Sydney. Um, so please give us a call if, if you need advice on, um, on acquisition, online acquisition. So th in this workshop, I prepared 10 best practices that I have learned over the past year. Um, it's going to be a little bit technical, uh, but I really want you to get a sense of what you can do um, when you get back to your office. Um, or just connect on your AdWords account, what you can immediately put into practice to optimize um, your costs and um, the volume of your conversions, because this is really what we're talking about here. So best practice number one, just going to talk about keywords briefly. So keywords are really the way um, customers find um, your business um, on the search engines. So when you think on a macro level um, about your AdWords account, 
you really want to have all different types of keywords. So a lot of keywords don't, all the keywords don't have the same uh, conversion behavior. Um, for example, in most of the accounts, you have brand brand keywords, so keywords related to your brand. You will also have keywords relating to your products, um, to other concepts. Concepts could be, for example, for a retailer at, at Christmas. It could be like, uh, I'm looking for a, a Christmas gift for my dad or something. Uh, if you're selling something that could be of interest to that user, well, you, you could buy these, these keywords. Um, it could also be the brand of other people um, if you're selling other brands on your website um, or specific items. Um, I put an HP uh, desktop model on here. Um, sorry. So um, when you think about these keywords, you have to group them into different campaigns. Uh, ideally, you should assign and you should assign a specific target CPA. So when I say CPA, it's a cost per acquisition. Um, obviously, when you buy your brand keywords, you're buying your, your brand. Um, so people who search your brand already know you. Your conversion rates are way higher. Uh, your acquisition cost and your CPC is lower. Your bids, uh, cost per clicks, sorry. Um, so you're going to have a, a target CPA that's probably a, around five or 10 euros on your brand. Um, in this example, I'm talking about a law firm um, located in Thailand. Uh, it's an old account I was managing. So just to give you uh, an example, I have two campaigns. One is the campaign where I sell visa services. Another one is a campaign where I, where I sell company and corporation services. Uh, in the first one, the average fee uh, of a visa, uh, typical visa, would be 400 euros. Uh, if we take 10% of that, very simple calculations, just to give you an example, uh, we would target a, a, um, a cost per acquisition of 40 euros. Um, with a conversion rate of 4%, that's, that would mean that I can go up to 1.6 euros for a, for a click. Uh, so these are just things to have in mind when you create your campaigns. Um, you have to know like what you're willing to pay for this type of campaign or this other type of campaign. For incorporation services, um, the average fee is much higher, uh, so the, the, the target CPA is also much higher. Um, on these types of services, as you, as you may well know, the um, competition might be higher, and so in some industries, you can see CPCs that go way up, like from 10 to 20 euros per click, so um, you need a very good conversion rate behind if you really want to, um, um, to monetize your traffic. Um, so let's talk about the second best practice. So we talked a little bit about keywords and keyword selection. So now I would like to talk to you about match types uh, and search terms. So these are really important uh, topics in, in SCM. The size will be available. Yes, the size will be available, yep. Um, so how to manage your match, your match types and search terms for exponential growth. Um, so this is a typical uh, ad group. You see you have several keywords. You have keywords that are um, in that uh, we buy in exact match, other keywords in phrase match, other keywords in broad modify match. Uh, there's one um, match type that's missing. It's the broad match type. So basically what that does is that when users search coach sportif, um, they're going to see your ad. Um, and if they search coach sportif Paris, they're also going to see your ad. So you're going, your, ad, your ad is going to be triggered um, with the phrase match by your term plus terms in front and behind. And with the broad modified match, the order could be different. So some, someone looking for like sportive coach plus something else plus something else would see your ad. So as you can see, the max CPC on those are different. Um, I am willing to put more money on the exact match keyword because I know that the behavior of my user on that keyword um, is, uh, first of all, I know I have a lot more volume on this type of keyword, and this keyword is much more valu valuable to my company. So my ad really matches that keyword. I have Coach Partif, um, so I'm, I'm ready to pay 1.52 euros. I have a much higher CTR, so click-through rate, um, clicks divided by impressions, because I have a higher position. So why why would I, sorry why would I want to add uh, um, other match types? It's because you never know what people type on search engines, and you might want to appear for terms that are related 
to your search term, but not exactly your search term. Um, you really want to uh, appear for all different types of keywords, so you really need to, to buy uh, these keywords. And after what we're going to, uh, yeah, maintaining your, your structure might be harder than you think because once you look at search term, the search term report, which we see here, so in this report, you see exactly what users typed after um, what user typed uh, when they saw your ad. So as you can see, Coach Sportif 77 or Coach Sportif Samor de Foss was generated by your phrase match keyword. So you also have in this report, you also have the, the amount of clicks and impressions. Uh, what you want to do with this report is that you want to look at the volume of clicks and the volume of, of impressions. Uh, if the volume and kind of spot trends, if you, um, you see, for example, Coach Party 77, I see that I have 12 impressions and two clicks. Well, that's not much, but I'm starting to see a trend. So I should probably look at this report in a month or so, uh, see if I have like 100 clicks. What is my, uh, my cost per uh, conversion? In that case, I would add an ad group Coach Sportif 77, um, really to, to separate Coach Sportif from Coach Sportif 77 because both of these types of keywords have a different behavior. Uh, what you also can do with this report is uh, find negative keywords. So you might, you might want to, um, for example, you, you're not providing your service in villebon sur yvette you might take that keyword and add it, and add it as a negative keyword um, at your ad group, at the ad group level or at the campaign level. So that really enables you to qualify the traffic that comes to your website. So best practice number three, how do you increase your ad rank without increasing your, bid, your bids? So this is a major, uh, this is a major hack, if you wish, uh, something I've learned over uh, the past six months. Um, because basically, how does Google um, uh, rank your ads? Um, they use what they call ad rank, um, which uses your bid, but also the quality score. Um, the quality score um, basically is determined by your expected click-through rate. Um, by the formats of your ad extensions, by the landing page, and also by the relevance between your keyword and the ad headline. So in order to, um, to increase your ad rank, either you have to increase your bids or you have to increase your quality scores. Uh, when we audit uh, accounts and, and, and pitch new customers, we often focus on the quality scores because sometimes um, they're just on the top position of the search engines but they want to decrease their costs, or uh, they want to appear above competition that has a, co a competitor that has very deep pockets, um, uh, but they're not ready to pay more for a bid. So in that case, w in that case, what we do is that we're going to create a very very tight structure around um, around the co uh, around the campaign. So as you can see in this example, we have a, a campaign that is company incorporation. Um, all these ad groups um, correspond to this theme, so company plus register plus registration plus setup. Then when you look at the keywords in that campaign, uh, in that ad group, company register, you have register company Thailand, register company in Thailand. So it's pretty much all the same keywords, just with different match types, uh, which means that the ad that corresponds to this ad group is exactly is, is exactly the keyword that you have in your ad group. Um, so uh, this type of structure is very time consuming to build, but honestly, if you put in the, the time, um, you will reap the benefits later on uh, because this type of ad will have much higher CTRs, click-through rates, because you're actually serving a headline that corresponds exactly to what the user is looking for. So. As you can see, in the, I'm not sure you can see, but there's the quality score up there, so 10 out of 10. Uh, above average expected click-through rate, ad relevance above average, landing page ex experience above average. So you're, you're really increasing the quality of, uh, of your account. Uh, therefore, if your bids are the, are the same, um, your ads may rank higher than some of your competitors with higher bids. Uh, and this is, a, this is a really a major uh, 
uh, major improvement to your um, to your account. So another best practice. Um, uh, so we talked a lot about keywords. About we talked about match types, um, and we also talked about the ad rank and the structure of your account. I want to talk a little bit about ads because they are the invisible part of the account, uh, the part of the account that your customers will actually see. Um, most advertisers don't pay a very close attention to their ads. To their ads. Um, they kind of like throw two or three out and and you know they're just waiting for the data to come in uh, may you know do some tests but um, you really can improve your ads with a little work so what's very important in this example sorry it's it's a French example but <laughs> um, you get the point um, I search for pre immobilier as you can see there's like more than five uh, headlines with exactly the same headline so when you're a user on this, it's like, where do I click? Well, you're probably going to um, click on the one that's, that's on the top or on, on the upper right. But as an advertiser, if you really want to, to catch uh, that, that click um, and um, expect higher CTRs, you can, add, um, you can add a little, you can put some benefits in that headline. So try to put yourself uh, in the user's shoe and um, you can add, for example, advice, conseil pre immobilier, or uh, obtenir pre immobilier in the headline. Uh, that would, for sure, uh, get better CTRs. Um, now, in the in the description lines, you can use very specific, uh, specific, um, uh, specific text like ad copy, like less than four days for an approval. Um, you could give the amount of customers who already successfully got uh, a loan um, at your company, but try to give really uh, interesting, uh, um, unique selling propositions. That's, that's what I was looking for uh, to increase your, your CTR. So as you can see, the, the last, I was pretty surprised because on, on my internet connection back at the office, we are on a, a, um, an IP address from Toulouse. Uh, and so you see that last, that last ad actually um, targeted my uh, my location, um, and they adapted their ad based on my location. I thought I thought that was a very smart move. Uh, you know, I, I would be much more like. Uh, well, actually, I am in Paris, so it doesn't work in this case. But uh, for all the people in Toulouse, I'm sure they would prefer like going through a, a company that is based next to where they live. Actually, so well done for that. <laughs> What you can also do to improve your uh, your ad copy, uh, to improve your ad performance, uh, is test different types of um, ad format. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard about the um, keyword insertion ad. Uh, this is the example on the on the left. So basically, um, you you're going to feed into your your headline uh, a keyword that Google will use if the query, the search query of the user is um, more than 25 characters. Characters. So in the last example, gourmet chocolate truffles is too long. Uh, it, it, is, it is replaced by buy chocolate. Um, so it's kind of an automatic format, um, quote, automatic format that works really well because it can really match, uh, match the user's query and so increase the, the click-through rates. On the right, you have two standard tests that you can run with the keyword insertion ad. So look at these as three ads in your in your account um, per in in your ad group. Sorry. Um, so on the right, you would have um, uh, you can, for example, I, I just changed the the second description line. So instead of uh, of having free shipping, uh, sh free shipping, I replaced by two day shipping. So you have to look at the performances over over uh, a month, thirty days to a month, and see which ad like performs best according to your um, to your objective so if you if you have a click ob objective you might look at the at the CTR um, the CTR will increase the number of clicks if it's higher if you're looking at a conversion objective you would want to increase the um, the conversion rate on your ads for example and optimize your ads for that so uh, at this point, I think so. We, we've talked about a lot of things about ads, about keywords, about match types. Um, do you do you have any uh, questions up to this point? I would just like to take a few minutes to uh, to ask you if everything is clear. Yes. 
the, the question is, do the, the, the dynamic keyword insertion um, improve the quality score? And I found that most of my best performing ads actually have a dynamic keyword insertion. Uh, they can improve the quality score. Um, they can improve the quality score. Now it's, it's not a given, uh, but that's what I found. Yep. Yes, please. It's uh, it's more a technical question, but um, just to come back on the pre mobile Toulouse when they like include the location, uh, but not it was not in the keyword uh, type from the user. How can they do that? Well, what you can do is you can um, you can segment your uh, your campaigns uh, by location, for example. So in in case in, the, in this case, uh, they must have an ad group that is. Uh, Pre immobilier plus location uh, that targets people in that area, so they know that uh, they know that they, they're targeting actually that that location in their campaign settings, so they can draft an ad that corresponds to that location exactly. Did I answer your question? Because it, it, in your campaign settings, uh, you're going to set uh, you, you're going to set all the locations that you target. Um, some advertisers, um, it depends on the business you're in, but some advertisers were just target all of France. Uh, some can target uh, main cities in France, for example. Um, if you're looking at some some genera gen generic generic uh, like topics, you would probably target like all of France. But for like pre mobilier or um, or some other types of services, um, you would you can target geographic like urban areas um, and tailor your, your ads and even your keywords to, to those areas. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to, um, to go on to the, the next five best practices. So this one is huge, RLSA campaigns. Uh, so this is remarketing list for search ads. It's a type of search campaign that you can implement in your AdWords account. Um, so you have many different types of campaigns in, in AdWords. You have search, obviously you have uh, remarketing display campaigns, remarketing search campaigns, uh, normal display campaigns, app, uh, mobile app campaigns. Uh, and this is a type of search campaign that will actually use your remarketing list and target your remarketing list. So the remarketing list is uh, basically the audience that you generated based on your um, uh, on your AdWords um, remarketing tag. So people who already came on your website are going to increase that audience. And in your search campaigns, you're going to target and bid on this audience. So in this example, you can see I have, a f I have four um, RLSA campaigns. Uh, basically, what I did is that I, cop I dupli duplicated my top four best performing campaigns. Uh, and this time, I'm only targeting the audience of my website that hasn't converted yet. So, as you can see uh, in the results here, on so it's it's a 30-day period on this account. On 188 conversions, 17 uh, come from my remarketing campaign. So uh, almost 10%. Um, you can also see that the conversion rate is double. Uh, my my account, so my account conversion rate is pretty low actually on this <laughs> this account, very low, uh, 0.67 and 1.34 on my remarketing campaign. So um, these campaigns will help you drive more traffic and and uh, to your to your to your account um, and also improve your conversion rates and your conversion volumes. Now, um, what you can also do when you when you create um, RLSA campaigns, is that as you are already targeting people who know your website, you can you can buy keywords that are a little bit um, that that are broader than your usual keywords, uh, because you know that if people click on your ad, they really want to go to your website because they already know you, so they might be looking for something that you're selling. Um, so what you do on this type of on this type of campaign is that you adjust your bids. So you could say, well, normally I'm ready to pay one euros on my normal campaigns. On these campaigns, I probably want to, p to pay one euro 50. So you're going to add a 50% bid, bid adjustment uh, on your 
RLSA campaigns, hard to say. Um, so a very, very interesting type of campaign. Um, although I would not recommend them if you don't invest more than two to 5,000 euros per month. Um, and if you don't have a very high organic traffic, uh, because you won't have enough, uh, you won't have a large enough audience to really make a significant uh, difference. Um, so yeah. So best practice number six, why are bid adjustments so important? Um, one of the main features of AdWords is to enable you to really know when your users convert and where they convert. So they might be in a specific location, um, they might be on a specific device, the mobile phones or the computers, uh, they might also be, um, uh, it, it, might, it might also be a different type of uh, time of the day, so it could be like maybe your users don't convert at night, they convert during the day. So this is an example of a bid adjustment that we call ad schedule, ad scheduling. So as you can see um, in this example, I have the number of conversions um, and these are the hours of the day. So I can see that during the night I have literally from 2 to 4 a.m. I have literally no conversions. And at 4 p.m. I have most of my conversions. So you can use ad scheduling to actually, um, your, your, the, the, the investments that you're wasting at night, you want to decrease your bids at that time. So you will, you will use adjustments, negative adjustments. For example, you're, you're, you can say like, okay, my bids are going to, I want my bids 50% lower at 2 a.m. And at, six, and at uh, 4 p.m., probably want your bids 100% higher to really catch all these additional users who might be converting at that time. Um, and as you know, the cost per conversion is always also, uh, like at, at 4 p.m. your cost per, co per conversion is much lower than your cost per conversion at, uh, two, at 2 a.m. Um, so, and, and this is just one example of bid adjustments. You can adjust bids based on, based on location. So, for example, if you, uh, with the data of your AdWords account, if you see that people in Paris convert much more than people in Lyon, well, you could adjust bids in Paris. Uh, you can also adjust bids uh, on mobile devices, and we will talk a little bit about that later. But this is a major act to your AdWords account. It also takes time and a little bit of analysis, um, but it can really improve your performances if you decide to, uh, to implement it. Um, most people don't take the time to do it. Um, and yeah, and, and you really should. So the only thing you need for this type of, um, of bid adjustment is you need a lot of data. I mean, you need significant data to really see trends like this one. Uh, if, if you know you you just have a few conversions, you won't be able to uh, to take any meaningful decisions uh, on on your schedules and on your bid ad adjustments. Um, so that's it. Um, so we talked about bid adjustments, uh, RLSA campaigns. Now we're going to talk about mobile traffic on AdWords. So mobile traffic is really huge. Um, every time now that we pitch a new company, we often ask for Google uh, to we ask Google to give us data about the sector um, that the, the the company we're pitching is operating in, and now. In every report they send us, like structu structurally, you see that the mobile traffic is mobile search queries are increasing and desktop search queries are decreasing. Even you, you see like minus three percent in desktop queries. Um, so that means that in some industries you have up to forty percent mobile traffic. So you really want to uh, to get all you can out of your um, your AdWords account and optimize it for for mobile traffic. So first thing uh, is also about bid adjustments. You cannot set specific mobile bids on search and display campaigns, but you can set mobile bid adjustments. So what you want to do is go on the settings of your campaign and adjust bids on, on the device section of the settings. Um, you can see in this example that um, the mobile uh, CPCs are a little lower than the computer CPCs. You can also see that the CTR is much higher at 7.99%. Um, so what does, and you can see that there's also a huge inventory of clicks on mobiles. So it's, it's almost uh, the same as, as computer uh, traffic. So it's a, it's a huge inventory. So you really want to use that traffic, but 
you may find that if you don't have a mobile optimized site, um, so a mobile site or a responsive site, you might have very, um, very poor conversion rates on mobile. So I think the first step would really be to optimize your site for mobile conversions. But if you do, and if you take the time to uh, really have an, a nice mobile interface, um, user interface, you can, you can really uh, beat your, comp your competition on, on that front. Um, CTRs are much higher because you only have like one ad on search once, and you can have like from one to three ads on your on your mobile phone. There's like no space for other for other ads, so either you're first or um, you're nowhere to be seen. Uh, so usually you have very high CTRs, uh, and in some um, some sectors CPCs are still quite low, uh, so you can take advantage of that cheap traffic. Um, you also you also have to keep in the mind that you need um, you need a um, mobile uh, you need a conversion tag uh, implemented on your mobile site if you really want to track your conversions. You also have to uh, keep in mind that mobile uh, mobile behavior is is different than desktop behavior in the sense that people can be searching for your product or services on their mobile before actually buying them on their on their uh, desktop computer. So you don't want to be only looking at the conver mobile conversions, conversions and cost per conversions on mobile, but rather look at your conversions and cost per conversions as a whole, because it might be misleading if you look at your uh, cost per conversion on mobile and it's huge, and, um, and you decide to stop mobile advertising, it might be quite misleading, because actually people are finding you on mobile and converting later on. Uh, further down the funnel. You can also implement uh, what we call mobile preferred ads. So uh, these are ads you can um, set um, in your ad groups. So what, what's very different on mobile ads, I, I talked about it a little bit before, is that sometimes you might have the description line that's the description line number two that doesn't appear. Uh, you might also have the site link, the, the extensions, right below the first line. So you don't want to create an ad where you have a sentence on two lines. You really want to have two separate, uh, ad, two, two, two separate lines. Um, you also want to implement all the, what we call the extensions. So the call extensions, site link, site link extensions, location extensions. Uh, these are especially important on mobile, uh, which is con con contextually relevant because when you're um, riding your car um, and, and you know just going to see a friend, you might be looking for a restaurant nearby, so you really want to implement those location extensions if you have a physical place of business, uh, call extensions because people can just call directly, so uh, think about putting all these extensions on your, on your mobile ads. So um, after mobile, I'm just going to talk about some flexible betting strategies um, although, I mean, um, th these strategies may not apply to your, uh, to your specific account, but I think it's, it's, uh, they can be very useful uh, if you start to scale your, your AdWords account. So we use something uh, that we call target CPA a lot. Uh, basically what it does is that you set, a, you set a target cost per acquisition and AdWords will take care of, all the, of, of the bidding process, so you won't have to set individual uh, bids for every keyword. You will just set a target and AdWords will try to match it. So this is how it works. Um, basically, you modify in the camping settings, you will modify um, uh, the settings. So instead of focusing on clicks up and I'll bid, I'll, I'll manually set my bids for clicks, uh, you will focus on conversions. Um, AdWords will recommend uh, cost per acquisition, so in this case 6.79. Um, uh, I advise you to stick with that with that figure when you start implementing uh, this flexible bidding strategy. Um, then you will you will everything happens at the ad at the ad group level. So once you click on your campaign, at the ad group level, you will see um, the C the CPA target that you set. In this case, it's 130 US dollars. Uh, and then you will analyze the results. So in this case, you see that the target 130 
that's actually a real campaign that I that I uh, that I screen that I, I did a screenshot of. You can see that the actual uh, CPA is 129, so it's very very close from what I from what from what I target. Um, so this type of strategy is um, is especially useful for large accounts um, and large display campaigns. Uh, you, it's probably more. Uh, more performant than you just trying to manually change the bids every time uh, you log into your account. Um, you should start with the recommended bid, uh, and you should just you know try it out based on the volume of your conversions. Uh, you could have different results. You can increase the the target uh, CPA, see how many more, how much more uh, uh, conversions you can achieve. Uh, you can decrease it and see if. Um, if you can still maintain a decent volume of conversions. Um, so yeah, so I'm talking a lot about, a lot about conversions and the cost per conversion. Um, in, in this type of strategy, you need a lot of conversions and historical data for Google to really be able to set right, correct bids. Uh, so you could, you could set, for example, the different type of conversions. For example, email registrations would be one conversion. Uh, on-site purchase would be another type of conversion. Obviously, it's going to cost a lot less to generate an email um, than to generate a sale. So you will have much more uh, email conversions, and you could optimize uh, your bidding based on your email registration, for example. So that's that's an idea of the, the type of thing you can do with this. So now. Hello? Yeah, sorry. So um, I talked about the, um, about the flexible uh, bidding strategies. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about, sorry, about display advertising. So you can use, so display advertising is, uh, is a little bit, I mean, controversial, maybe not controversial, but uh, for search advertisers, because oftentimes you don't get the same performances. But I, I really recommend you to, to test display advertising, even if you're a, a search advertiser, because um, on, on the search engines, you have a limited volume of search queries. Like, uh, in every given day, you don't have uh, more than uh, X number of people looking for, uh, for, for a keyword. But on the display network, what we call the Google display network, you have more than 2 million websites, and your ads could appear on any of these websites, and you can target users based on, uh, for example, their behavior, based on keywords, based on demographics, so if they're male or female, based on their age. So in this example, um, I, I just give you a few of the, of, of the things we do uh, at FA Lab. Um, we try out some great display campaigns for our search advertisers in order to increase the volume of conversion. So why do we do that? Because it's, it's a very large inventory of, of traffic, and it's also very cheap. So in this campaign, you say I'm, I'm, my average cost per click is just 17 cents, when on the search network, you could be paying from you know, one, to th one to three dollars for a click. Um, and you can really target uh, users based on the, the con contextual data of the website you're targeting. For In this case, uh, contextual targeting is, is basically keyword targeting. So in your display campaign, you tell Google that you want to, um, for example, fitness. You're targeting the fitness uh, keyword. And uh, Google is going to identify in all the display network which websites correspond, which wes websites talk about fitness. And it's going to feature your ad in uh, this website. What is very important if you want to uh, really uh, master display is to use all the available um, ad formats uh, that you can that you can uh, actually feed into your AdWords account. So you have a lot of banner formats on the top, on the side. You also have text formats, and I know you you might think that it doesn't you know work and click much, and it doesn't click much, but there's just so much inventory that you can really drive a lot of traffic to your site uh, with display. Um, you, you would be amazed sometimes to have very like small text ads that just perform so well. Uh, it's it's uh, incredible. I, I, and, um, and so you, you can use 
this type of um, a strategy to drive more conversions to your account and also drive cheaper conversions to your account. Um, so you also can test many different types of targeting, as I mentioned, uh, placement targeting, interest, topics, geographic and language. Um, what we usually also advise um, companies to do is start by targeting your remarketing lists on the display network. Uh, so you're really targeting people who already visited your website. And then you can start trying to, once you've tried that, that you can start to acquire, um, you can start with more like hardcore acquisition uh, where you're really going to target the display network without any, uh, without targeting any audience, without targeting your audience. So I really tried. Um, and the last one um, after display, is the settings of your campaign. You might be really interested by this one and I'm, that's why I'm finishing up by this one. Um, so when you create a standard ad, ad, um, a, st a standard uh, campaign, uh, search campaign, usually uh, Google will automatically uh, set all the settings of the campaign. And that can have a profound uh, impact on the performances of your campaigns. So I just wanted to mention a few things you have to look at when you create campaigns. First, don't follow, uh, don't follow the standard um, settings on a search campaign when you set them, because you could actually be also advertising on the display network. Uh, if you create a, compa a campaign that we call search with display select, so you have, it's better to create a search campaign only or a display campaign only, but not to create a search with display select um, type campaign. Uh, you also have to look at the locations you're targeting. So because you might be targeting France, but actually uh, if you don't ex exclude some other French speaking countries, um, you could end, end up having a lot of users uh, from Morocco, for example, or Algeria clicking on your ads. Uh, and if you only ship in France, well, you don't want these people clicking on your ads. You're just you know spending your, your budget for nothing. Also, also the la language targeting is quite important. Uh, we always target, for example, in France, French and English because you could have your browser or your Google settings set in English. In that case, the advertiser who doesn't target the English language would, would not appear. Um, you can also look at so the bid strategy that we talked about uh, a little bit earlier with the, um, the, flex the target CPS strategy. Um, delivery methods. So delivery methods um, is like how is your budget spent over the, over the day? Usually the standard method for AdWords is, um, is like is standard delivery. It means that your budget is going to be divided basically in 24 hours. Uh, and maybe at 6, uh, at 6 p.m. Um, you don't have enough budget to appear all the time. So Google sometimes you're going to, your ad is going to appear, sometimes it's not. Uh, if you're set on rapid delivery, accelerated delivery, uh, you will appear all the time. And you can, if you don't want to spend all your budget quickly, you will just then decrease the bids, your bids, but not decrease your budget, just decrease your bids. Um, and the, the ad delivery, so this is um, uh, ad, ad optimization. You can optimize for clicks, your ads, optimize for conversions. Uh, so take a look at that. And uh, different networks, advertising networks on which you advertise, um, because you have the search network, Google search network. You also have the um, Google partners. Um, the, the, yeah. So the, the, the other search networks, for example, free.fr is a is a is a search partner. So you could gain additional uh, traffic by targeting these additional networks. So uh, look look at the settings um, and and really. Uh, like, don't go with the standard uh, settings when you create a, an account. Well, thank you very much for your attention. I hope it wasn't too technical. Uh, please ask me. So, yeah, we can probably uh, continue with a Q&A &A session. Um, I know it was a little bit technical. I hope I didn't uh, lose you guys <laughs> in the process. Does anyone have a, have a question or? Uh. Yeah, just to come back on the first point you said about keywords, do you think it can be relevant to uh, add some keywords when there is some specific events in the location you are 
related to your uh, to your like business, but it's not the same thing. But do you think it can be like useful or yeah. it's clearly useless? Yeah, yeah, totally. In fact, um, you really have, um, you really want to have m all the keywords you you can have in your account, um, just because you're going to drive more traffic to your website. After the bids might be different, so you're ready to pay less for keywords that are of of lesser value to your business. Uh, but actually, if it's if it's related somehow to what you're doing, you can try out these keywords. Um, and you should not like just because a keyword did not convert does not mean it is not useful for your business. But the the very important thing is that you have to you have it you have to let it uh, con you have to let it convert. What I mean by by that is that if you spend uh, 50, 30, 50 euros on a keyword and you just say like, well, it, it never converted, it's not interesting for me. Um, you might you might be missing the point. So you have to be ready to spend a little bit of money on that keyword to identify the behavior of of the users on that actual keyword. And you know, like after 200 euros spent, you might have a conversion. So, but probably that's a, a little bit too much for you. So you would decrease the bids. But uh, any keyword is is good to test if it's related to your to your business. Uh, when you start a campaign. Uh, does it make sense to start with a flexible bid strategy so that you can already understand which keywords are useful to you and uh, what is the CPA and all, and then you try the manual uh, bidding strategies so that? Uh, uh, so the, the answer uh, for me is no. Uh, you would first start by, um, because you first need a lot of his historical data to uh, enable Google algor algorithms to um, um, to really work well uh, and to really um, and to really be able to match your target CPA. Uh, so what what you would do first is manually set your bids and spend a bit, uh, specifically on on the display network. So you really want to uh, to buy a, you want to buy data basically. You want to buy a lot of data once you know what's working and that you have a large amount of of uh, conversions. Uh, you want to lower your bids. And after after a few weeks, you want to introduce a flexible bidding strategy. That that's usually how how we do it. Yeah. Hi, um, I just want to know if you tried something new called Google Google Customer Match, uh, where you can import Gmail address that already converted to website. Yeah. Do you have any hacks or any use on that? Yeah, very very uh, interesting question. Actually, it's a, so it's a new Google product where you can. Uh, uh, import. Uh, it, it works a bit like the custom audience on Facebook. Uh, I've personally never tried it yet. Um, I don't know if some of our people tried it yet. Um, no, I'm, I'm not familiar with any results yet. Um, although I think that uh, you should absolutely try to target that audience uh, if you have a, a large enough um, uh, base uh, to match. Um, Typically, you, you 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 would be in the uh, yeah in the thousands of addresses uh, to start to have some some significant some, some results on your on your campaigns, but um, I haven't tried it yet. What can be interesting too is the similar similar audiences similar to your audience, or similar to your customers. Well, if there's no questions, I guess. Um, I will let you guys go have lunch or go back to work. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, just send us, send me an email if you if you have any questions. Your slides will be up on the on the meetup. Um, have a great day. Bye.